everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to show you my, na my next cake creation. I have created a werewolf claw cake or a Freddy Krueger cake, however you want to look at it. I was so excited to dig my hands right in and get this cake put together because it has one that I have been eyeballing for a while now. So when my friend asked me to make it for her son, I was so excited. And it's pretty funny that I was so excited because I am not a horror film fanatic in the least. But when it comes to Halloween, I get really excited over the gory effects and creations that people do. So this was a lot of fun. And it was fairly easy. So I am super excited to show you how I created it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I hope you enjoy. All right, so I'll begin by taking two eight inch round red velvet cakes and I will begin to add my homemade vanilla buttercream to the first layer. And I will place a nice big portion of buttercream right on the cake and begin to smooth it out with my offset spatula. And once that is smooth enough, I will place the next layer right on top and smooth out my sides. And once my sides are completely smooth, I will set the cake in the fridge for about 15 minutes to set. And then I will begin to ice the cake all over. And I am going to show you a little trick using my biggest piping tip. This tip is specifically made for piping icing all over cakes. And I begin at the top by just piping around the edges, moving inward to the center, and I will smooth out the top. I want to make sure that my buttercream is very smooth. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And I will begin by piping the sides starting from top to bottom. And like I said, I want to make sure that everything is really smooth because I am going to be putting fondant over the whole cake. And I want to make sure that <clears throat> there's no dips, there's no spokes, anything that can destroy the fondant and make it look uneven. And I am doing a thick crumb coat here to make sure that the fondant really adheres to the cake. Okay, and as I finish smoothing the cake, after I'm completely done, I will set it off to the side and begin making my blood. Okay. 
And I will start making my blood, taking five tablespoons of seedless raspberry jam, one and a half teaspoons of lemon juice, a quarter teaspoon of red food coloring, and a tablespoon of water. And I will place it in a small pot over the stove and stir it until it is boiling. And once it has come to a boil, I will remove from the heat and set it off to the side to cool. Next, I will take my homemade marshmallow fondant and begin kneading it until pliable. And then once it is pliable, I will start rolling it out with a fondant roller. And this had just come out of the fridge, so it was a little difficult to work with, but once I really got it moving, it rolled out perfectly. And as I roll, I want to make sure I'm rolling in a circle shape, keeping the fondant in a very circular shape as much as possible. And I want to roll into about a quarter to an eighth of an inch thickness. And rule of thumb is you want to measure the diameter of the top of the cake by the sides of the cake and at double the side of the cake and add it to the diameter and that's how many inches you'll need for fondant. And because I knew that my recipe made enough, I eyeballed and I just keep rolling until it's thin enough and big enough. And I'm just using powdered sugar to prevent the fondant from sticking. And I just trimmed off the rigid edges just to make it a nice circle and to keep rolling until it's thin enough. And once it is ready, I take a bigger rolling pin and I roll it back onto the rolling pin. I don't have a bigger fondant roller, so I had to use my regular rolling pin, which is not very practical because, as you can see, I am holding it from the center because of the way that the rolling pin is designed. With a larger fondant roller, I would be able to hold it from the edges. So I just roll it right over the cake and it just drapes right down so beautifully and I take my fondant smoother, smooth out the top. And as I start the sides, I'm going to show you how to smooth out the sides. So you pull out on the bottom and start smoothing from the top to the bottom, just rubbing your hand, really pressing against the sides of the cake to make it nice and flat. And you just keep pulling the bottoms out, stretching them out, not too hard but just to make sure that you don't have any folds in your fondant or cracks. And I just continue to do this all the way around.
here is the very last part and I just stretch it out, releasing some of the sides just to make sure that there's no folds and just really pressing my hand in. And I got a little over aggressive with my pressing against with the fondant and the icing and I actually ended up sliding the cake off center of the board which is perfectly okay, I was able to recenter it. But here I'm taking my fondant cutter and trimming the ends off of the fondant. And we pull it away gently, recenter the cake, and now I'm taking my fondant smoother and just going over it one more time, making sure it's smooth, there's no air bubbles or folds or cracks or anything. And now I will begin making my claw marks. So I begin with a sharp knife and I start right under the edge of the top of the cake and slowly work my way down. And I'm just cutting right into the fondant. Slowly doing little saw motions very gently. And then now I will take a fondant tool and my fingers and begin to just randomly press the sides of these claw marks. And as you can see, I accidentally had some finger indentation as I was pressing just a little too hard. But since I had cut the fondant open and released air, the finger marks went right away. So. I had no issues and I just continued to pull those sides out just to make them more rigid and rugged, really making those claw marks look more authentic. Okay, now it's time to add the blood, and I will take a glass dropper, and this one is an angled glass dropper. I thought it would have more control placing the blood in, and I just take some of the edible blood and begin to squeeze it right into those claw marks. And the purpose is to just let the blood flow out and flow down. But as you can see with this dropper, it did not want to flow out the way that I wanted to. And by the time that my blood had cooled down, it had actually thickened. And so I had to end up heating it up just a little bit to make it more runny. And I was surprised because I got this recipe from another cake decorator.
And by this point, I realized that the angled dropper was just not doing it, so I switched to a straight dropper. And as you can see, I begin with a straight dropper and it just flows right down the way. I want it to nice and bloody and just gushing and that's exactly the effect that I wanted. So I knew that I had gotten to a point that I was happy with the blood and the dropper. So I just continued to go through the claw marks that hadn't been done and I went over the ones that I had did before with the other dropper. And next I'm just taking my dropper and just adding random splotches of blood all over the top of the cake. It doesn't have to be neat because it's a messy, bloody mess. So I just did random drops here and there. I ended up just doing some along the top and a couple different odd lines. Just really had fun with it. And it is complete. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. It was so much fun making this. Um, if you have any more comments at all, feel free to comment and let me know what you think because this is the first time I've ever made anything like this and um, other than the jelly just being a little bit thick I am super happy with how it turned out so honestly I think it looks pretty darn good I think it looks like a pretty good bloody claw cake so please please subscribe like and follow my channel and thank you again for watching have a great day